Nicola, please come down. Nicola, please come. And um, this is history, folks. They will watch the newsreels of this great moment of the outbreaking of peace. And all I need to say is swords have been beaten into plowshares and spears have been beaten into pruning hooks. And here we are to appreciate it. I give you Keith Bergelt and Nicola Schifano. I think the first time I was here was uh, before I accepted the role that I currently occupy, 11, 11 and a half years ago. Uh, coming to the event, uh, listening to people in this room speak, obviously Eben, uh, and learning about open source, having come from the different set of backgrounds, worked in technology for a long time. It was very inf informative and very, uh, uh, very confirmatory of the importance of open source, this elegant social movement that we're all participating in, the idea of self-regulation and, and self-organization. Dave talked about the, the self-regulating nature, and I think how appropriate this topic is and this union is uh, with Microsoft, uh, it's not, a, it's not a, a union with OIN necessarily. OIN is the vehicle to be able to create kind of a set of norms or code of conduct for uh, what most people accept as being uh, to create authenticity within the community and uh, and to see the evolution the the point that as I, I've made this I've had I've spoken probably six times since this was uh, announced in the last you know two or th two or three weeks but no company has made a longer journey from being the most successful proprietary software company in the world to now being a company that is arm in arm, hand in hand with uh, with other companies to be able to uh, to be able to create products, to deliver services <clears throat> to their customers, uh, and to be able to tap into the creative vein that is open source. Uh, and you know, the title that Mike talked about, it's I think it's quite interesting that John Knowles wrote, wrote a uh, a book called Peace Breaks Out. A lot of people don't know it because they remember his famous uh, late 50s tome about Phineas and Gene, uh, a separate piece. But Peace Breaks Out was was about uh, the, the a generation of of, uh, of of boys that that were not able to fight against fascism, were not able to fight against the artificial controls uh, that were being imposed on on a on a world uh, across the sea. And uh, in some ways, this, uh, we're, we're now looking at this openness and freedom and the ability to engage all companies. And one of the most sophisticated technology companies in the world has now joined the fold. Uh, and I think that to me is significant. While I don't allow myself the emotion of euphoria, uh, uh, <laughs> just my nature, uh, I'm not good with high highs and low lows, but uh, I see this as significant, clearly for, for OIN, but it's more significant for the community and incredibly significant for, uh, for Microsoft as a company because it shows their evolution. And it shows the inevitability, as I've always described to uh, Eric Anderson and, and his predecessor uh, it leading the IP function. Open source is inevitable for companies who want to compete effectively in a, in a hyper-competitive world uh, and, and participate in models that are, that are really essential um, to, to stay, uh, to, to deliver what your, cust your customers really want. I think it would be useful now if, if Nicola could provide kind of a sense of how this evolution's worked because this isn't something that happened last week or last month. This, is, this dialogue with OIN has really been a three-year process. Uh, it, it intensified early in the spring, but, uh, but having perspective from the inside to be able to share kind of this evolution and understand the changes inside, inside Microsoft are, I think, important to be able to elucidate. Yeah, th thanks, uh, Keith. I think it's uh, first uh, a honor to, to be here, so I, I really am grateful for, for the invitation and the, the opportunity to talk today. Yeah, I think it's, a, it's certainly a journey, and, and frankly, you know, first, 
it's fair to say that we are we see you know, Microsoft and ourselves as part of the community, and um, you know the, this becoming part of a community has started many years ago, and um, we see OIN as kind of one milestone in that in that journey. Uh, frankly, there were other milestones before um, the work uh, in Azure and in other places, and the increasing reliance on, on Linux was certainly an another important uh, milestone. Joining the uh, uh, Linux Foundation, not even two years ago, I think, is uh, an important milestone. Uh, you know, shipping Linux in a uh, IoT module, uh, a thing called Azure Sphere, was I, I think you know, frankly, uh, we discussed that with. Um, uh, some people here yesterday. That was at least internally a defining moment of, um, you know, hey, that's the future, that's the present. Um, so the, I think the, you know, joining OIN is, is in a sense just a logical consequence of all these steps and of this, you know, increasing participation and in reliance on uh, on the community. Um, so you know, I think we are here now. We are, we kind of climbed this mountain. You know, we are at the top, uh, so to speak, uh, past this uh, big uh, hurdle, at least from a Microsoft perspective. We see ourselves deeply in that community. We see the, you know, I think the, the future of Microsoft is tightly coupled to the success of um, developers and their ability to collaborate, share innovation. And there is no, you know, really alternative for us. The uh, working with developers, I think you see that also with the, uh, the, the, the GitHub uh, the, the work that's going to happen with GitHub, uh, ensuring that developers have uh, this ability to, to collaborate is really important. And, um, and that's how we want to use the IP as well, to uh, actually enable that collaboration, to create this uh, uh, patent piece on these uh, community projects. That's really the, um, you know, how we see the, uh, our actions. I want to understand a little bit more about what it means from your point of view to have come into this broad church of ours. We had um, awfully sharp disagreements over the course of these decades. We were, we, we were not easy in one another's company. For us, I think, if I can speak from the point of view that was on the other side all that while, it's easy for us. We, we, we have welcomed everybody. Everybody got here. Some people came into existence because FOSS made it possible for them to exist. Some came because they began to build devices which uh, they wanted software commoditized to put into and our dear friends at Google offered them an opportunity to get into the game without a software ante. Um, but, but never quite have we welcomed uh, someone under these conditions. Um, uh, I, I feel uh, no problem about euphoria, I just want to avoid triumphalism. I want to be modest and easygoing about this. I want not to do any crowing lest I should have to eat crow at the other side. I know what we are welcoming. We are welcoming people who used to be our adversary and whom we now are delighted to know as friends. That's a, that's a special and important feeling and it's part of why I'm a little sentimental about all this because it is a pleasure uh, to welcome an adversary as a friend. Um, from Microsoft's point of view, is this a temporary business decision based on the political realities or the political economy of the cloud? Is this heterogeneity, is the model of IT today and vertical integration might be the model again tomorrow? I don't want to be in a marriage of love if this is a marriage of convenience, then I want to be convenient too. I tend to think that GitHub is the demonstration that you live in our world now and that we all are going to be good citizens of it together. That feels to me like the crucial moment in the process. But I would really like to understand Microsoft's heart a little bit. I cannot, like George W. Bush, look into the eyes of Tsar Vladimir and feel his soul. And I, I certainly don't know how the other guy feels. But I want to believe that we really met in, in some honest, honorable way here. What is it like for Microsoft to be with us? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. I think historically, Microsoft has been a, um, a developer's company first. And the, along the way, you know, that focus has 
um, maybe not changed, but diminished a little bit. And I, I think now we are kind of back there. It's, a, it's really about, you know, um, working with uh, developers. And so from that perspective, I think there's really a recognition internally that you know, open source is the way to work with developers. And from that perspective, you know, that's why you, you hear you know, people like uh, Satya, the CEO, saying Microsoft loves Linux. Um, it's really about this uh, change of culture around the way you engage around software, you know, how you, you build software, and how also you, you basically need to share innovation um, with the broader community to not only develop faster, but also make sure that you know, you, the innovation you share is of better quality. You know, all these um, elements which we view as, as really essential to be uh, successful in this uh, new age. And you know, again, the, um, as we continue to build you know, our reliance, as we continue to, to enable uh, others to, to use these uh, projects, being part of OIN, being part of all these projects, you know, the GPL pledge and others, certainly there are more to come, new issues are, you know, now, now that we have kind of turned this page a little bit, I think there are new issues that we need to think about. And um, so that's uh, really what, you know, what, where we are and uh, where we want to go to really work with the, the community to solve these new, new issues. Many people in the room remember when their companies were in that place. Right? That's not, a, that's not a new story. That's, that's how many of us came to be friends, colleagues, and comrades as we are. I, it's part of why I'm not in a distressed or ironic or doubtful mood about what has happened. We have real peace here. It is based on something that we can all understand. We've been through it. We all got into this place by some means that felt a lot like that. Keith, what, what, what do you think this means for IBM other than the obvious fact that if Microsoft can take an OIN license, there's no entity on earth that shouldn't take an OIN license? Yeah, I, I think, you know, for, for OIN, this is not really a reboot, but it, it allows us to, to look at having accomplished a very significant goal, which is to, brought in, to bring in a company that, you know, in the really the triggering event probably for OIN's formation was the SCO financing that Microsoft was doing and, uh, and creating kind of more FUD within the community. And so to go from there to where we are now is, is clearly, uh, it, it's an important event. But uh, perhaps, um, not to take a contrary view from, from Evan's opening remarks, but uh, there's still more work to do. Um, there are uh, aggregators uh, on the patent side that have patents that are concerning to us that read on the Linux system and core Linux functionality. Uh, we want to be able to uh, look at taking the OIN model and platform and working with our member companies that have funded us uh, to be able to see how we can affect a positive change there to reduce risk from patent aggregators. Then there's always the threat of copyright aggregation. Uh, I've never been individually concerned with Patrick McCarty um, and his behaviors, but I have been concerned about what they signify, that they lead to someone who, some people with more money, better lawyers, who can actually aggregate copyrights uh, and create potential friction within the community. I think it gives, the, the Microsoft signing gives us the opportunity, uh, one, to, uh, to assign companies that have been on the fence, that have been maybe hiding in plain sight uh, previously and now are exposed because again, as said, if they can make this journey, anyone can. Uh, and so, uh, you know, if I used to say if IBM can expose its massive patent portfolio and participate in this way, then anyone who has patents can. Uh, this just gives us another source of, of energy and really this, the knock-on effect or what I'm calling internally the Microsoft effect, we've already had 140 new licensees in the 12 working days since the announcement. Uh, that's a bit more than we would normally have. Um, you know, we've been averaging 80, 70 to 80 licensees a quarter for the past three years. Uh, we had done much more than that at certain points in our history, but this is the kind of exogenous force that, and factor that causes us to realize that we need to work doubly hard to 
to kind of grow the community. For every one of the, the companies represented here, we're growing the community so that our responsibility is to look at every ecosystem, every project that the Linux Foundation manages, and make sure that we're including core code to protect those projects and project participants. And and reduce the friction that they might otherwise uh, experience. So for us, it's an opportunity for us to pivot, to be able to broaden and open the aperture to be able to do more for the community to support patent non-aggression and, and more broadly IP non-aggression. And it's an opportunity for us to, to build relationships with new companies that have been on the fence. I mean, just uh, Rogers here and Alibaba just signed the OAN license. Uh, uh, Ant Financial, which is Alipay, signed the license about three or four months ago. This is not an aberration. Uh, Tencent's advised that they're signing the license in two weeks. And so the movement is really in this direction. China, we now have more licensees than we have in Japan, which is saying something because Japan is, tr is the most sophisticated open source company and the most experienced open source country in, uh, in Asia. And so the, Ch the Chinese movement, neutralization of potential risks from the massive patent filing strategies that are, are, being, that are pr being promulgated there. There are, there are lots more things for us to do, and we're going to do it arm in arm with our member companies, with our licensees, and, and we're going to do it arm in arm with Microsoft. And this is not just sign a license and then we don't see, see each other, we don't support each other. We want to work with Microsoft to make sure that we can provide the benefits of our experience and guidance around, around activities and ac actions that could be taken to, to further continue this evolution that Nicola talked about uh, and to ensure that that value is created because we can draw off the knowledge and experience that Microsoft has uh, in rounding our experience in how we expand the Linux system definition, how we grow into new technology areas and much the same way that our relationship with AT&T is, is, is defining as a new licensee that, that came in earlier this year. These are critically important companies and we don't want to, we don't want to have them simply be part of a signatory group of companies but rather these are companies that we do outreach with. I was just in Seattle two days ago. Uh, I think uh, well, Nicola and, and, and I were together last week in, in Scotland. We are looking to create more glueware so that, that this relationship is one that's defining for them and defining for us going forward. I'm going to state an ambition about what we can build on this piece just to add to the idea that there is more work to be done. I would like us now to be able, using this broad patent piece we see before us, to assure every individual FOSS developer and every nonprofit project out there that they will not be the targets of anybody's patent aggression. This is basically true for all OIN licensees within the Linux system definition. And it is rational conduct for all the patent holders in the world now to permit that ungoverned and largely ceaseless form of innovation which is out there in individual developers, students, academic teams, and nonprofit community projects. They should have complete patent peace now. We are close. No matter whether everybody makes an OIN license or there are a few hard-bitten naysayers out there should make no difference to every individual who is learning how to program and who wants to put some of her code into something that other people use. I would like to believe that it will be quicker to get to that state of complete peace for individual developers and nonprofit projects around the world than it was for Keith to bring in Microsoft, three years, he said, three years. I, my diplomatic goal here is three years from now, every free software developer in the world will feel completely safe from the patent system. And those who benefit from patenting their technologies and monetizing their research in their projects, will, in their products, will feel completely safe in doing that because they will know that that does not interfere with their ability to gain positive returns on their research investments. That's the goal I would like to see, the peace dividend out of this wonderful peace for all the coders around the world who are the client base I have been serving for decades now. I think that's achievable because peace makes peace.
Because when people behave responsibly and seek peace and seek justice for society, then you can build on top of it. That's why law school exists. All right, so lunch is being set up, which means we need to have our fight before we can have lunch. Um, thank you both very much.